Hey everybody and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program RP0. We're out on the launch pad yet again with another milk run for money because Lord knows we need it. Uh, the contract, uh, the initial buy-in was like, uh, well here's my money, 300 grand which put us up over a million and the payout for completion is another 300 grand. All we gotta do is park these guys in orbit for 10 days and we're good. We've got uh, Commander Alice Campbell at the helm, Nina and John Oliver, terrible comedian, uh, riding along to do pretty much nothing. But uh, we've pretty much field tested this DN1A. Uh, this is the Block B upper, which is the J2, and the Dot 2 uh, lower, which means it's got the two E1 advanced uh, engines out of the six E1s total for just that little extra oomph to help get the uh, heavier upper stage off the pad. I did not mean to click that. Alright, so let's get them lit and let's get the volume turned down so I don't deafen myself. Get those launch clamps off. Alright, and we'll begin our slow climb. Actually, it goes a lot better. Those two E1 advanced make a world of difference. I think with a four booster design on this, our payload to orbit increases significantly. But uh, I'll, avoid, I'll avoid boring you with uh, my drab talk during this launch sequence, and I'll go ahead and uh, see all of you in orbit. <laughs> All right, well, I, I shut down the engine entirely too soon. I'm pretty sure this doesn't uh, satisfy the contract. Uh, where did it go? Well, let's... Uh, wow. Okay. Oh, yeah, it does. All right, our eccentricity is A-OK. -okay. So, all right, let's just go ahead and get our J2 stage off and RCS our way out of the fairing while scraping against it a lot. Uh, you may notice that the service module on this one is uh, quite a bit shorter than our last model uh, because it is. I shortened up the service module because we just we don't really need it. We don't even really need the service module other than life support and such. Uh, because we're really only using this for low Earth orbit. Alright, we are showing a drain of 1.27 or so. Uh, what I did do, because I had all this extra free weight from shortening the service module, I don't know if we can go in here and take a look, but yeah, there's, there's an RTG, there's a battery, there's another RTG, and another RTG, and another battery, and another RTG. Nope. Crossfeed enable. Does that do us any any good? Nope. Still a net drain on our batteries, so that shouldn't be too much of a problem with the solar panels. We should recharge quite easily in the sun. I, at least I'm hoping. So let's uh, let's take a crew report, radio that in, complete our. Uh, apparently, it's going to take a very long time. <laughs> Man. Those are some verbose crew reports. Bingo. Got it, though. Uh, contract complete. That's a free four grand. That almost begins to cover some of the things that we had going on. But, all right. Uh, I want to deorbit this. Clean up some of our space junks. Uh, since we don't need it to adjust our orbit. Let's go ahead and get this thing spun to retrograde. And that should actually ullage our fuel for us. Yep, very stable. Ignition. Wow. Yeah, that's very well deorbited. It took next to nothing. 
Can we still switch back? Yes! <laughs> and we will be leaving that thing quickly in the distant distance. Alright, I, I want to see how much of our draw is depleted overnight. These things do matter. Uh, because that has been the problem I have been having with um, this module, or this service module in general, is that that command pod takes up so much electric charge. Like, just gobs and gobs and gobs of it. So that after a few days, they start running low. And that's just not good. <laughs> that is not how we put ourselves on track for doing interplanetary missions. Even though there is no technical night side of anything when you're interplanetary. If you do plan, however, on spending a couple of years orbiting Mars, these things matter. So if you're wondering why I'm launching these super repetitive low Earth orbit missions, it's because eventually I would like to send crew to Mars. All right, well, our rate of recharge does not exceed our rate of depletion. And that is a problem. So uh, these solar panels are not retractable, which was not in my plan for anything going to Mars because I would like to aero break. I don't think we could totally aero capture with something as massive as a crude interplanetary ship. But having retractable solar panels is certainly part of the grand scheme of things, I suppose. And seeing as how these just don't fit the bill, I guess uh, a lot more RTGs are going to go than what I had initially anticipated. So, that's good to know. <laughs> Alright, but for the most part, we could just leave these guys here in orbit for a couple of days. Actually, a lot longer than that, because we've got a few other things I wanted to check on while we were doing this stuff. Namely, JASCII 2, which in 16 days makes its fall on into Jupiter space and we need to double check its uh, orbit and alignment and everything like that so we're gonna just uh, go ahead and well first I'm going to take a quick save just in case everything goes absolutely sideways there it is jump the ship all right and here is the cute little guy Wow, what is this node for 843 meters per second? Is that your orbital insertion? Holy shnikes. Zooming way the hell out? Yeah, I guess it is. That is, in fact, our node for orbital insertion. How far off is that node? 80 days? Give or take? Not bad. We will double check it once we actually make orbit. Which will be in 16 days, so let's just uh, go ahead and warp to that. Do do do. <sighs> the quickest way ever to complete a 10 day in orbit contract is to just go do anything else in space. And Kerbal Alarm Clock should snap me out of this warp. I really hope we have 843 meters per second. E good. We should, right? That one-ton bus holds a whole lot of fuel. Boink, delete on close, thank you. Ah, come on. There we go. Yeah, I just wanted to get us in the actual SOI so that I can put away Kerbal Alarm Clock, finally. <laughs> Zoom way the hell out. Find Jupiter. Try to click on it without clicking on a node. Yeah, that's not going to happen. <laughs> Alright, we're just going to have to eliminate the node. Jupiter focus view. Oh, man. I, yeah, there's no mapping equipment for Jupiter. <laughs> it, well, you can scan Jupiter. You're not going to get much. But I didn't know we were coming in so incredibly polar. That is awesome. What is our altitude at periapsis? Four million? We could probably tighten that up, but I just don't feel like it's worth it. All right, and into a capture is at least 595 meters per second. And I guess we can just go ahead and burn all of the pro, all of the uh, cores delta V and just see how much we can get out of that. 
Uh, NECJEB's not going to give us a delta V number, I don't think. Yeah, because we don't have any engines proper. We just have uh, these two little guys. Good, they're all locked. That is locked. All right, and 63 days. Let's pull out our alarm clock. Add alarm, maneuver node, 63 days. Thank you. Perfect. All right. Dare I look at the contracts to see if, uh, yeah. <laughs> Apparently, we've done none of them. Maybe we should just jump back and take a look at that. We can do this all through map view because we're special like that. There's Earth focus. Thank you. And the stutter. Artemis 2. Switch 2. Alright, so, contract. <laughs> They've been here for 16 days. Awesome. Everything's checked except for the lander splashdown. That's what I would like to see. How about that 90 day? Yeah, see? That sucks. We have to actually stay with them for 90 days for that to actually work. And, you know, I just don't think we're going to do that. I think we're going to go ahead and try to bring them home. I, we haven't even turned on our Apollo service module engine. And the only reason we're going to boot it up is to try to bring them home. Which we might as well do now. But I... I promised that I wasn't going to stretch this out over multiple episodes. Oh, RCS works better when you turn it on. Yes, there we go. <laughs> a, a half second or two of absolute panic. So you guys have plenty of electric charge. Yep. Good to know, good to know. Get you flipped around in the retrograde. So many thruster ports on this command pod that I just did not know were there, but they are nice to have, aren't they? All right, Kerbal Alarm Clock, you can go away. I'm sorry that I'm not going to sit here with you while you guys uh, orbit for 90 days, because that just seems absolutely silly. Arm. Arm. Make sure this one armed. It did not. See, that's why I'm glad I checked. All right, and let's... Uh, Activate your engine. Ullage. This whole color-coded thing for the engines is just brilliant. I do absolutely love that system. Alright. And I guess we don't need to go quite as low as 60. Lest we hit 9 Gs again. But uh, certainly somewhere within the atmosphere would be good, which I guess now technically we will be. Uh, oh, yeah, I forgot to hit the button. 56. I hope you guys are resilient, because you're coming home wicked fast, yo. Thunk. All right, there's that, Mo. We need to be pointed to retrograde. 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 Retrograde, please. All right, and how much delta V do we have left in that service module? Yeah, about 3,000 meters per second. Excellent. All right, and we're just going to go ahead and ditch our service module. Okay. I repeat... DHR service module. Thank you for your service, good sir. It's been nice knowing that even four RTGs is not enough to feed this hungry capsule at night. Alright, and I'm just going to rotate this in. Oh, that's so awesome. We have roll control. Oh... This capsule is awesome. It's definitely the best capsule so far, I should say. Goodbye, dear service module. I'm so sorry that you're entirely full of fuel. That was a big waste of money, but 
I'm going to get paid a lot more either way. It's like 87000 to launch the rocket, and the total payout of this is six hundred grand, plus the five grand that I made for just radioing in nothing. How cool is that? <laughs> All right, and let's get to some physics warp. I'll probably speed up this whole process and hopefully just see all of you on the ground. And splash down, splash down, splash down, splash down, splash down, splash down. <laughs> and there you have it. Another milk run for money. Hopefully complete. Um, contract complete. 300 grand. Yay! We're making money, man. That's what matters. 1.4 million. We're back into the I'm comfortable with this range. So uh, thanks for hanging out. Um, sorry, it was another milk run episode but you know gotta make that money so we can do the cool stuff that we want to do and build bigger and better cooler things so anyway uh that's gonna do it for us today guys thank you so much for hanging out i do appreciate it and i'll see all of you in the next one so until then see you later